Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today, we're diving into everything we know so far about Avowed, the upcoming RPG from Obsidian Entertainment. From its gameplay and story details to the latest trailers, we've got a lot of cover, so let's get started. Avowed is set to be a shorter game compared to some other RPGs. It won't be as long as, say, like, the witcher or skyrim and speaking of skyrim which this game is continuously compared to which i personally think is an incorrect comparison to make and even the game director carrie suggests the same by saying i think the best comparison is the outer worlds i think that gives a much clearer idea of the scope of the game and also the design and layout which outer worlds their previous game was about 25 to 40 hours long depending on how you played which i think is perfect for a game like this if Obsidian continues to do what they do best, which is create compelling RPGs with lots of ways to play, then a shorter game in scope is great because you can play it, beat it, and then re-roll another character and make new narrative choices during your next playthrough. While some might wish for hundreds of hours of gameplay, I believe a focused 40 hour experience with solid gameplay and a good story can be just as satisfying, especially considering the amount of replayability Obsidian games tend to have. The reveal trailer back in the summer of 2020 gave us a dark and mysterious vibe reminiscent of the Minds of Moira from The Lord of the Rings. It definitely piqued a lot of interest. It made us wonder what must be lurking in that cave entrance. And I remember seeing this trailer and being like, yep, this game's for me. Fast forward to the summer of 2023 and we get a gameplay trailer that was much more colorful and vibrant, which was quite a shift from the initial reveal. It did feature some cool looking weapons such as dual wielding pistols and axes and the tagline choose your destiny hinted at the game's branching narrative. Don't get me wrong. I didn't dislike the look of the game, but I'd be lying if I didn't say I missed the darker tone and that the trailer just fell out of place. It felt like a whole different game. The reveal trailer gave me the impression that we were getting a dark and gritty game. The industry seems to be shifting away from darker in tone RPG games, and it just makes me a little sad is all. But <laughs> we'll get back to Avowed. That's a topic for another day. In the 2024 Xbox Developer Direct, we got a deeper look into the game. While the reception of the combat was a little mixed, it did showcase some narrative choices and mentioned a lot of secrets to uncover, which is great. Speaking more on the combat though, I personally think it looked weird primarily due to the FOV. It just seemed too zoomed in, making the first person melee combat just look awkward. However, I must admit, I'm not sure I can think of one first person game that had good looking melee combat. It all just feels kind of awkward and like a VR game. But please, let me know in the comments if you know any games where the first person melee looks and feels good. For melee combat, I've always preferred third person. It just looks and feels better to me, which by the way, this game now has, which is great. But again, to reiterate, this game is not trying to have next level combat, which could be a turnoff for some people, and that is completely fair. For me, it's all about the RPG elements and if they can get those down. Their previous titles showcase that they can do RPGs right, and because of that, I can forgive the combat for being a little awkward at times. This stage of the game, you can definitely see how polished things are shaping up to be, especially compared to the gameplay trailer we saw back in 2023. This definitely makes me more optimistic for the game and excited to see the finished product. The story trailer released on June 9th, 2024, and it emphasized the Forge Your Own Destiny theme even more. Which again, if they get this right, which I think they will, then replaying the game in different ways will be enticing to a lot of people, including myself. They showcase the much-loved Stealth Archer gameplay, some wicked magic, and a variety of weapons to a sword, a staff, wands, and a sword and shield to name a few. It really looks like the combination of weapons is very flexible, which is very exciting to see. Some fun looking platforming was shown off and overall the reception of this story trailer was positive. Now, what can we expect from the plot? A vow to set in the world of Yora, you'll explore the living lands, a mysterious island with a spreading plague threatening to destroy everything. As an envoy of a deer, your mission is to investigate and stop this plague. The story branches depending on the key characters you interact with, like the Emperor of Adir, Inquisitor Ludwin, and your companion Giada. Each has their own perspective on the plague, adding depth to your choices and the overall narrative. The Emperor wants you to find out more information on this plague and put an end to it. Ludwin believes the plague is a result of a larger problem on Eora. And lastly, Giada, who will be one of our companions throughout the game, she believes the plague is part of who we are and that we should embrace it and live with it. For me personally, I'm curious to see more of what Ludwin thinks and potentially go against the Emperor and Giada. Let me know in the comments what key character you think you'll end up following throughout the story. Again, doing my best to push the dark and gritty bias aside, the game does look very lush and charming. To elaborate on the lush and charming atmosphere, the game features several different zones, including the desert wasteland of Shatter Scarp and the beautiful Emerald Stair. Also, the game has a dynamic time of day, which is always nice and adds to the immersion. Originally, Avowed was just a first-person RPG, but they've now confirmed a third-person mode as well. The combat system is flexible, allowing you to switch between spellcasting, sharpshooting, and melee combat. There are parries, blocks, and special attacks, and you can customize your loadouts for different play styles. Again, 
They are really trying to drive home how flexible their combat system is. You can use anything from two-handed weapons to dual wielding pretty much any one-handed weapon with another one-handed weapon. You can even stagger enemies in order to create space or hit them with a heavy attack to do loads of damage. There are also lots of dialogue choices and consequences that impact the game's factions. Just from what I've seen, there's anything from flirtatious dialogue options to attribute dialogue options such as might and perception. Despite some concerns about the combat looking possibly a bit generic, the RPG elements seem robust, with a variety of abilities from different classes that you can mix and match. And ultimately, that is why I play a game like this. It isn't for the combat. Other games take care of that itch for me. It's about the RPG elements and specifically the player choices that make me want to play and appreciate this game. And who knows, maybe this is a game where the combat may look floaty and awkward at times, but it's a completely different feeling when you're playing it yourself. Moving on to weapon upgrades here. This will be a core system to the game and something that most definitely cannot be ignored. When you are under leveled, you can definitely see and feel that in the combat. Conversely, when you're properly equipped, you receive immediate feedback while attacking enemies. All these upgrades are done in the party camp, which serves as the narrative and upgrade hub. This will be where you can not only upgrade gear, but progress the story for the individual companions that are with you. Back to the upgrades though. There are four quality levels, common, fine, exceptional, and legendary, and three upgradable tiers within each quality level. It's important to note that items can only be upgraded to the top tier of their specific quality. For example, a common sword can only be upgraded within the common quality, while a unique item can be upgraded all the way to legendary. In my opinion, this strikes a good balance. It's neither overly simplistic nor overwhelming. Overall, it looks solid. We also learned some more about the upgradable character attributes. The attributes are might, your damage and weight capacity, constitution, your health and resistance, dexterity, your attack and movement speed, which is my personal favorite, perception, your crit hit chance and max range, intellect, your mana and elemental resistances, and lastly, resolve, your stamina and cooldown. There seem to be a good variety of abilities and we get a look at the trees we can select them from. We have the fighter, ranger, wizard, and godlike. Additionally, there are companion abilities to choose for our companions. It's interesting because you aren't restricted to a single tree, you can mix and match abilities from all four. This could definitely lead to some extremely unique builds. Personally, I might just focus on the ranger abilities and play as a pure ranger. I know, maybe a bit boring, but that's just kind of what I like. However, the option to create a fighter wizard character and roleplay as a Templar is quite appealing. I might just end up doing that. Another positive for character building is the option to respec again. They're really trying to add to and emphasize this notion on how flexible the game is when it comes to crafting your character. It does, however, cost materials, copper skew. Hopefully it's not too expensive to respec. It always feels bad when you get an ability and then you go to test it out and you're like, damn, I really don't like this ability. And then you're kind of stuck with it for a while. So hopefully this copper skew won't be too hard to come by. At the end of the day, if it delivers interesting factions, character and stat building, and a fun world to explore, I'm all in. The combat might be a bit mid, but the weapon and ability flexibility may make up for that, and the monster variety and dynamic world have me excited. The reveal trailer set high expectations, and while the game has shifted in tone, I'm hopeful it'll still offer a fantastic RPG experience. Good writing, choices, and companions can certainly go a long way for a game like this. Personally, I miss darker themed fantasy RPGs, and while Avowed has a vibrant look, I'm hoping for deep, impactful storytelling and choices. Whether you're playing stealthily or aggressively, it seems like there will be plenty of ways to shape your journey and influence the story. And as for when we can get our hands on this game, all we really know is it will be sometime before the end of this year. There were rumors of a November 12th release date, which could make a lot of sense considering all Xbox is doing for the fall of 2024. But again, we just don't know. I'm sure we'll get some new info on the release date here soon. But yeah, that's all for today's video and everything we know about Avowed so far. Let me know in the comments what you're most excited about and which character path you're likely to follow. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, odds are you probably enjoyed it. At least I would hope so. So please, if you would leave a like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. And again, thanks for watching. Take excellent care of yourselves and goodbye.